In this video, you're going to learn how to solve three variable, three equation word problems, and we're going to go through three examples together. So what we're going to do is we're going to practice how do we actually write the equations, you know, given the problem in a word or story format, and then how do we go ahead and solve those. I know a lot of times students, they can solve them, but they don't know how to write the equations as well. So we're going to practice three different types of examples to give you some experience. So this first example, it says you invest $14,000 in three bonds at 3%, 5%, and 8% annual interest. After one year, you have earned $900 interest. The amount invested at 8% is four times the amount invested at 3%. How much is invested at each rate? And I just gave you a little hint here. You might want to make the amount invested at 3% our X variable or X unknown. Uh, 5%, that could be Y, and uh, the amount invested at 8%, we'll call that Z. But remember, when you have three variables or three unknowns, you need three equations. So what are our equations? Now, oftentimes, when you're doing word problems or story problems, if you just take it like a sentence at a time, you know, it's not always this case, but a lot of times it'll be like, for every sentence, it's like one equation. So you could kind of approach it that way. The other way to, to do, do it is to kind of read through it quickly first, and then read the last sentence. That's usually asks you like what you're trying to solve for. Like it says, how much is invested at each rate? Oh, okay, so I need to figure out how much is invested at 3%, 5%, and 8%. And that's why I made these variables our X, Y, and Z uh, unknowns. So our first equation is the total amount invested. That's gonna be uh, X plus Y plus Z is equal to $14,000. Our next equ equation involves the amount of interest. Now here what you wanna do is you wanna say 0 0.03 times X plus 0 0.05 times Y plus 0 0.08 times Z equals the $900 interest. So remember, when you work with percentages, you have to convert that to a decimal by moving the decimal two places to the left. Also, we're taking the amount invested at 3% times 0 0.03 to get the amount of interest earned at the, with that particular bond. And then the total is the $900. And then lastly, the amount invested at 8% is four times the amount invested at 3%. So the amount invested at 8%, which is Z, is four times the amount invested at 3%, which is X. Sometimes students, they mistakenly reverse this. They say 4Z equals X because they're saying, oh, the amount invested at 8% uh, is four times. Oh, I have to multiply that by four. But what you're really doing is you're saying, let's take this amount where there's less invested that uh, at that rate, and let's quadruple it so that it's the same as the amount invested at that higher rate, that 8%. Also, another technique you can do is maybe just pick a number like uh, $1,000. Oh, okay, four times 1,000 is 4,000. Oh yeah, that makes sense because the amount invested at 8% is more uh, than the amount at 3%. So you can play around with a couple different ways of uh, looking at these. But when you have three variables, you need uh, three equations, which we have. And we can solve the system using substitution, elimination, or some of the other methods that you may know as well. But what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna clean up these equations by multiplying through by 100 on the second equation to get rid of these decimals. So if I multiply by 100, it moves that decimal point two places to the left. Make sure you multiply the entire equation. And so that's gonna give us uh, 3x plus 5y plus 8z is equal to 90,000. Uh, this equation here, I'm going to get the variables on the left by subtracting 4x, so that would be negative 4x uh, plus 1z is equal to 0. And then this equation here, I'm just going to leave it as it is. So x plus y plus z is equal to 14,000. And these are our three equations that we're going to work with to solve the system. Now, here what I'm going to do is I'm going to eliminate the y's in the, the first and second equation because I can see there's not a y variable in this third equation. So I, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 5. So if I do that, let's see, let's write it over here. That's going to give us negative 5x minus 5y minus 5z equals negative uh, 70,000. Okay. The second equation, let's just leave it as it is, 3x plus 5y plus 8z is equal to 90,000. And when we add them together, you can see those y's are gonna cancel out. So that's gonna give us negative 2x plus 3z is equal to 20,000. And then let's bring over this third equation, negative 4x plus 1z is equal to zero. 
So now we're down to uh, two variables, two equations. Now we would need to eliminate either the x's or the z's. Let's go ahead and eliminate the z's by multiplying through this equation by negative three. That'll give us uh, positive 12x minus three z is equal to zero. And when we add these together, the 12x and negative two x is just gonna come out to 10x. The z's are gonna cancel and then 20,000 plus zero is just 20,000. So what I did is I, because one of the variables was positive and one was negative, I just added the two equations so that those z's would cancel. Now if we divide both sides by 10, you can see that x is equal to 2,000. So that means that there's $2,000 invested at 3%. Now, if we put it back into, let's see, this equation right here, we can see that, oh, four times 2,000 is 8,000, so we know the amount invested at 8%, or our z variable is $8,000, and we know the total invested is 14,000, so we plug x and z back in here, we can see that y must be equal to 4,000, uh, dollars, and that would be your final solution. Now, I would write a sentence and just not just write X, Y, and Z. I would say, oh, the amount invested at uh, 3% was $2,000. Put your, your units there. The amount invested at 5% was $4,000. The amount invested at 8% was $8,000. Let's go ahead and take a look at the next example. If you want to test yourself, go ahead and pause the video and see if you can do the second one on your own. We'll go through it together. It says a collection of nickels, dimes, and quarters total $3.70. There are twice as many nickels as dimes, and the value of the quarters is 10 cents more than four times the value of the dimes. How many of each coin are there? So this is an interesting question, and sometimes uh, you know, what they'll do is they'll phrase it in slightly different ways. Like they might tell you the number of coins, or they might tell you... Um, you know, just different pieces of information. But what I like to do is kind of read through it quickly and uh, see how many coins, you know, or see what we're trying to solve for. In this case, how many coins are there of each? So, well, what we could do is we could try to figure it out on our own and try to go through a bunch of coins and, and add them up. But let's see if we can actually uh, write the equations here now. So, let's see. So, it looks like they're totaling up to $3.70. And what I like to do is I like to use the first letter of the variable, if at all possible. So I'm gonna say N is the number of nickels, D is the number of dimes, and Q is the number of quarters, okay? So in this case, we've got uh, nickels worth five cents times the number of nickels gives you the value of the nickels, right? Plus 10 cents times the number of dimes, since the dime's worth 10 cents, that's gonna give us the total value of the dimes, plus 25 cents times the number of quarters gives us the value of all the quarters together, and that's gonna to equal to $3.70. Now, our next uh, equation says that there are twice as many nickels as dimes. So the number of nickels is twice the number of dimes. Now, again, just like in that first example, sometimes students will say 2n equals d, but there's really more nickels than dimes. So to make this an equation, to make it balanced, I actually have to double the number of dimes to be the same as the number of nickels, right? And then lastly, it says uh, the value of the quarters is 10 cents more than four times the value of the dimes. So the value of the quarters, we know quarters were 25 cents, times the number of quarters, that's the value of the quarters, is 10 cents more, okay, so 10 cents plus, uh, four times the value of the dimes. So it'd be four times the value of the dimes. So a dime's worth 10 cents times the number of dimes, we have to quadruple that, plus 10 cents more to equal the value of the quarters. Okay, so now, uh, let's go ahead and solve this system. So what can we do here? Well, first thing I would do is, let's kind of simplify this a little bit. So this is going to be uh, 10 cents plus 0 0.40 times D equals 0.25 Q. And then I'm going to go ahead and multiply through by 100 to get rid of the decimals. So this would actually be something like this, 25 Q equals 10 plus 40 D. And then I'm going to take it one step further. I'm going to move the variables uh, to the left and keep the numbers on the right. So that's going to look something like this. Um, uh, let's see, uh, negative 40D plus 25Q is equal to 10. Okay, that's a good equation. This one, same thing, I'll multiply through by 100. So that would be uh, 5N plus 10D plus 25Q equals 3 170. 
And then this one, I'm just going to subtract the d to the other side. So that's going to be uh, n minus 2d is equal to 0. OK, so now these are our three variables, three equations. This is the system that we're going to solve now. So again, you can do this in different ways, substitution, elimination, um, different other ways. But let's see. I think in this case, what I'm going to do is, since we've got these 25q here, how about if I just, um, let's see, how about if I try to uh, eliminate the q's? And what I'm, I'm going to do that is I'm going to multiply this top equation by negative 1. So that's going to be a positive 40d, a negative 25q, and a negative 10. So then when I add these together, uh, the q's are going to cancel. That's going to give us 5n, uh, let's see, plus 50d is equal to 360. Okay, now over here, we've got this third equation, n minus 2d equals 0. Let's bring that over. Now you can see we're down to two variables, two equations. So here what I'm going to do is let's eliminate the n's by multiplying this bottom equation by negative 5. So if I do that, I get negative 5n plus 10d is equal to 0. I'll just bring down this top equation, 5n plus 50d is equal to 360. And if we add those together, see how the n's cancel, we get 60d equals 360. Divide both sides by 60, and the number of dimes is 6 dimes, right? Now, we can go ahead and take that and put it back in to this equation here. 6 times 2 is 12, so the number of nickels is 12. And now we just have to find the number of quarters, which we can do by plugging it into, uh, let's say, maybe this one right here. So this would be 5 times the number of nickels, so 5 times 12 is 60, plus 10 times the number of dimes, so 10 times 6 is also 60, plus 25q uh, equals 3,370. Okay, so this is 120. If I subtract 120, that comes out to 250 is 25q. 25q, divide both sides by 25, and you can see the number of quarters is 10. Now again, I would write a sentence, uh, because some people might label these variables x, y, z, and then your teacher won't know what you actually solve for. I would just say there's uh, 6 dimes and 12 nickels and 10 quarters. Just write a sentence. So let me erase the whiteboard. Let's do the third example. Okay, see if you can pause the video and do number three on your own and get some practice, and we'll go through it together. It says a 29-question test is worth 100 points. The test has true-false questions that are worth two points, multiple-choice questions that are worth three points, and free-response questions which are worth five points. There is one more multiple-choice question than true and false and free-response questions combined. How many of each question are there? Okay, so again, what I like to do is kind of read it through quickly first, then read that last sentence. How many of each question are there? That's what I'm solving for. Those are the unknowns. And again, remember my strategy, I like to use uh, the first letter of the variable so to represent that quantity. So I'm going to use T for true-false, I'm going to use M for the number of multiple choice questions, and I'm going to use uh, F for the number of free response questions. So since there's 29 questions, let's say the number of true-false plus multiple choice plus free response equals 29 questions. So a lot of times when you do these word problems, you'll notice that one of the questions is like a quantity, kind of like how many type question. And then the other one is kind of like a cost or like a how much type question. So in this case, the, the cost or the, the value is going to be 100 points. But we know a true false question is worth two points, multiple choice question is worth three points, and a free response, which are the toughest usually for students, right, are five points. And that's equal to the 100-point test, right? So you're taking the number of uh, true-false times the number of points. That gives you the total number of points from the true-false questions, et cetera, for a total of 100 points. Now, we need one more equation since we have three variables. And it tells us that there's one more multiple-choice question than the true and false and free response questions combined. So there's the number of multiple-choice questions. It's one more than the true-false plus the free response questions, you know, added together or combined together. Okay, so now 
again, we could, we could do the substitution method. We could say, oh, if m equals 1 plus t plus f, I could put that in for both of these m's, okay, and then get uh, two variables, two equations. We could do it that way. How about let's do it that way since we haven't really done the substitution method. So I'm going to put that right in for here. So that's going to give us, here, I'll put it down here. So it's t plus, instead of m, I'm going to write 1 plus t plus f equals 29. Oops, I forgot the other f. So plus f equals 29. Okay, and uh, let's uh, clean that up a little bit. So this would be uh, uh, 2t plus 2f is equal to, I'm going to subtract the 1 over here, which is 28. Okay, so that's, that's a good question, uh, equation right there. And then over here, well, let's put this in place of m here. So that's going to give us what? It's going to give us 2t plus 3 times what m is, which is 1 plus t plus f plus 5f equals 100. So this one, cleaning this up, we're going to distribute the 3. That's going to give us uh, 3t plus this 2t would be 5t. And this is uh, 3f plus the 5f is 8f. And 3 times 1 is 3, but if I subtract it over to the other side, that's going to be 97. Okay, so that's our other equation. So now we're down to two variables, two equations. Let's go ahead and rewrite them over here so we can see it a little bit easier. So 2t plus 2f is equal to 28. And then this equation, 5t plus 8f, is equal to 97. Okay, so that's what we're down to, two variables, two equations. Let's eliminate the f's by multiplying this top equation by negative 4. So if we do that, we get negative 8t minus 8f equals negative 112. So if we add these together, we get negative 3t equals negative 15, divide by negative 3, and you can see that there's five true-false questions. Okay, now if we plug it back in to one of our two variable equations, let's just put it back in, um, let's see, we'll just put it back right here, uh, right here, so this would be 5 times 5 is 25, so 25 plus 8f equals 97, subtract the 25, that's 8f is equal to 72, divide by 8, f is equal to 9. So that means we have 9 free response questions. And we know that there's a total of 29 questions. So 5 plus 9 is 14, which means there has to be 15 multiple choice questions. Now again, I would uh, write a sentence. You know, I would actually don't just write tf and m or try to write it as a, a triple, like, you know, in alphabetical order. Try to actually write a sentence. There are five true false questions, there's 15 multiple choice questions, there's nine free response questions. So great job if you're able to follow this video. If you want more practice solving systems of equations involving three variables, three equations, I'll put a video for you right there. Follow me over to that video, we'll get some more practice. I'll see you over there.